The Golden Eagles got off to a roaring 2-0 start to the season. We've got all the post-game highlights, reactions, and Buzz Williams' press conference coming up on this show. This is a delicious hot dog. And this is Marquette Basketball Weekly. Welcome to Marquette Basketball Weekly. I'm your host, Brad Galley. We're here at the Al McGuire Center where Yusafa Mbao has broken most of his sweats this season. That's going to change, and we'll break down his return coming up later in the show. Plus, the Golden Eagles signed a new recruit on the last day of the signing period. We'll get to that. And I talked with all the Marquette Golden Eagles this week on what goes into Marquette basketball, a behind-the-scenes look at what goes into their hair, their flair, and Coach Williams' style. But first, the Golden Eagles opened their doors at the Bradley Center to Centenary this past week. And it would be Jimmy Butler's night in downtown Milwaukee, the junior forward poised for what would be a career outing. He scored early and he scored off and dropping the ball off in the first half here until Lazar Hayward. Lazar goes to the rack, he misses, but Jimmy picks off where he left off last season. One of his five offensive boards as he puts that one back in. Darius Johnson owed him an impressive evening for him, 23 minutes of action. Here he is dropping this three ball in. He was three from six from the field, 10 points for Darius in his debut. But it was Jimmy Butler's night and it was not to be forgotten. 11 for 16, shooting on the evening. He goes coast to coast and finishes here. 13 boards, 27 points as Marquette Trump Centenary, 85-62. In some ways, I thought we did some really good things, some things to build on, definitely some things that we need to begin to work on. And then it was Maryland Eastern Shores' turn to roll into the Bradley Center on Tuesday night. Senior Lazar Hayward told his junior teammate Jimmy Butler, hey, anything you can do, Jimmy, I can do better. Spinning, turning, kissing this one off the glass. He ups Jimmy's 27 points in the season opener, amassing a career-high 28, but more on Lazar in a minute. Now his senior teammate David Kubian dropping this three ball in. David getting the minutes this season. He finished with 12 points, and so did Juco transfer Dwight Bikes getting his own rebound here, putting it back in the basket. Four for eight from Dwight from the field. He would get the and one. Maurice Acker kicking it out here to Jimmy Butler in his first three-point attempts as a Golden Eagle. He sinks all three of them. Jimmy continuing his prowess here as a Golden Eagle. But it was Lazard Hayward's night. The runner there, Lazar Hayward finishing with a career-high 28 points, as mentioned. He passes Jim McElveen on the all-time list of scorers at Marquette and is just one point behind Dwayne Wade for 25th all-time. And now to Chris Galke for more from the Bradley Center. Whenever we get a paint touch, we it's pretty much a guaranteed basket. Chris O'Toole put it best. For the Golden Eagles to have continued success, they will need to get the ball into the paint. Lazar Hayward had the most success in that position Tuesday night as he amassed a career high in points and also avoided foul trouble for the first time this season. I can't make uh, plays like I made that first game, and I know that. Just, you know, I have to go out there and play basketball. I think I was looking for, you know, Looking for guys when I wasn't supposed to or, you know, trying going too hard to the rim or, you know, just little stuff like that. I just got to take what the defense gives me. He was much better in the second half, um, and I'm glad that, that he was able to have that because we need him to play. We don't need him to score like that all the time, but we need him to play like that all the time. Hayward understands what he needs to do for this team. However, with Coach Williams informing the media that Joe Fulce injured his right knee during practice, others, like Jerron Maiman, will need to step up. He has to get a little bit more comfortable, you know, with the offense, trusting the offense, you know, just like any freshman, you know, coming into, a, you know, a college. And I think he, when, once he gets comfortable and he sees, oh, our offense pretty much works, and, it's, and it's, pretty, it's pretty easy, I think he'll, he'll be okay. In the first half, he was somewhat aimless in what he was trying to do. That's just as much my fault as it is his fault. Um, 25 practices in, it's hard in his second game for him to have uh, some, some uh, consistency. The talent is definitely there for Jerron Maiman and the other newcomers to the Marquette basketball team. If they want to have success at the Division I level, Coach Williams said they will need to leave behind the tendencies of their past. Reporting from the Bradley Center, Chris Galke, MUTV Sports. I'm Todd Warner. Coming up later in the show, I'm going to break down how Marquette was able to break the zone Tuesday night. But first, here is Brad Galley with what goes into Marquette basketball, an inside look. Being an elite-level Big East powerhouse, Marquette is constantly in the national spotlight. The talent of the players in the Golden Eagles is the major contributing factor to keeping the attention on this private Jesuit institution. When the lights go on and the cameras are rolling, athletes have to do more than just perform. They have to look good. 
And these talented Marquette players are no exception to that rule. I just like the headband, you know, trying to bring something new, you know, a new feel, just trying to look new, you know what I'm saying? I'm here, you know, I'm trimmed down, you know, just just trying to look new. My first 40 point game when I was when I was about 13, playing in the park, I'll never forget it, Martin Luther King Park. My friends were just wearing them, you know, they had some Jordan headbands and I was like, oh, you know, let me let me wear one. So I wore it. It was a Jordan headband, white with a black symbol and uh I had 40 that day, so I was like, I'll never, never play another basketball game without a headband. Just a style, you know, I just I just have that I've always worn, tight t-shirts under jerseys. Some people like email me and stuff, tell me that, that they're wearing the goggles in the game, so I find that cool, so the goggles are cool. Sporting a headband, undershirt, or any type of flair only looks good if the players are keeping up with the most important part of their appearance, their hair. You have to ask my barber, he comes to almost every game. I go to... Hispanic barbershop, so I don't know. I just, he does, I just, I trust him with whatever he does to my hair. Just wake up, brush it a couple times with a brush, and yes, I do use a brush. My mom really wants me to cut this. She really doesn't like it. <laughs> For what reason, I don't know. Um, but uh, I just try to keep my hair nice and neat, you know, try to be presentable around campus and whatnot. I need to get a haircut soon, though. <laughs> It's a little long for you or what? Yeah, it's too long for me right now. I take delicate care of it, you know. This is uh, very valuable stuff. I don't let anyone just touch it. Uh, you know, I'm just here. I don't even know what shampoo I use, but uh, you know, nothing, you know, nothing too generic. I like name brand stuff, you know, and uh, if I'm going out for the night or doing something special, you know, maybe put a little gel in it, little make gel? it look, make it look a little nice. Dwight Bikes' is creative hairdo drew the most comments from the guys. What do you think about Dwight's hair? On what day? Uh, <laughs> After a while, Dwight just keeps that hoodie on. So when he keeps the hoodie on, you know what that means. He needs to get it rebraided. <laughs> He'll go from, you know, it, it looking all nice. After a while, it just looked like just matted Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> I like Dwight hair. You know, I mean, it looks nice on him sometimes. Uh, when it gets a little, what we call it, nappy, yeah. like uh, hair starts going all over the place, it looks uh, horrible. Now that the season start. I get done, I get done every week. Take time to get it done. So I gotta do everything prior to my schedule, cause it take about for some for some fancy designs like this. It, at the at the most, it take probably two hours. After I get it done, I make sure I put some I make sure I put grease in it to keep everything looking nice, and I put my uh, my do rag on to flatten everything out so that I won't have hair sticking up everywhere. Despite the variety of opinions on Dwight Bikes' hair, the players all agreed on one thing. Their coach's impeccable style. Buzz is buzz. Man, that's his style. I mean, him, Monarch, Benford, they all got to look clean. So, you know, I think they go to the same tailors, I think, sometimes. But they, you'll never see them on a bad day when it comes to suits. He's fresh, man. He deserves to look fresh. You know, that's Coach Buzz for you. I think he looks good. Uh, I think he likes looking good. You know, he, he gets all his custom-made suits. Uh, you know, I guess one of the perks of, of, of being a head coach of an elite level school. One of Buzz's Texas brothers, Jimmy Butler, has enjoyed tremendous success here in his time at Marquette. But that hasn't stopped his creative teammates from giving him quite the nickname. Head, because he has a big head. It's simple. <laughs> long head, because Jimmy has a real long, long, and very long head. Uh, what he, goes into that nickname? He has a couple nicknames. He doesn't like them, but he has a couple. This is, I knew he was behind me because I can just feel the circumference of his head <laughs> behind me. You know, we usually big head or Head, head man in charge, or we always call him top heavy, no. or he's he's always the head of his class. <laughs> they gotta do the big noggin with, yeah, with Jimmy Butler. Making those, yeah, yeah, and they're they'll, they'll definitely be in the crowd. So. Like the Jimmy Butler fat head. Yep, just. Just the a people with the big old that. head. Just a normal picture because my head's so big that. Oh, yeah, yeah that could be, it'd be you know, that too. You know, normal size. Yeah. Life size. Yeah, It'll life be big. Size, there you know. go. Many fans had questions about how this team would adapt after losing Jarrell McNeil, Dominique James, and Wesley Matthews. Well, it's clear after talking with them, they're all on the same page, and as amusing as they all are, they're pretty darn good at basketball, too. Coming up after the break, Todd Warner looks back at how Marquette was able to beat the zone Tuesday night, and Donnie Dwyer looks ahead to how Marquette will handle Grambling State on the boards. You will want to hear what Buzz Williams has to say about that. Plus, you want to hear what he has to say about his newest recruit, Reggie Smith. That's all coming up next on Marquette Basketball Weekly.